Hey everybody, this is Rudy Sarzo and today's guest on the dash is my The Guess Who bandmate, lead singer, songwriter, producer... Barista. <laughs> Barista, that's right. <laughs> Derek Sharp. Yay! Yay! We happen to be right here in Fort Wayne, Indiana, where we're actually we're kicking off the new, the, the new The Guess Who tour... And the album is dropping, what, September 14th? 14th. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think whoever came up with the, you know, with the catchphrase, dropping, never grew up with LPs. <laughs> because when we dropped vinyl back in the day, it would just break. <laughs> yeah, or warp. <laughs> or warp. Top, mine already warped. Yeah. Yeah. No, we opened the first one yesterday. Yeah, we, that's we, right, we, we did. did. We, we did an did. opening ceremony. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So tell me, I mean, you've been, you've been in the Guess Who... For a very long time. Yeah, when did you join the band? More than 10 years now, in 2000. So you've been the lead singer, main songwriter, and... But, you know, according to Gary, I'm the longest serving singer now. I, I, I don't know how true that is. You'd have to ask <laughs> Wikipedia, but they lie anyway. Um, so, but I, let's let's just say I believe him. <laughs> He's been around a long time. He's so. been around a long time. I mean, you're yeah. Canadian. I'm Canadian. Where were you born? Oh, where was I born? In Fort William, Ontario, which is now... Thunder Bay, which is in the middle of nowhere, in the middle, almost the center of of Canada. Is everybody related to Paul Schaefer? That is from well, Thunder Bay. Well, it's funny, you know. My, <laughs> I haven't thought about this in years, but my grandmother used to uh, play cards with his mom. There were these ladies that would get together. I didn't know he was long gone by the time. Uh, mm-hmm. I was aware of anything, and we moved in 1973, so we got out of there. So, yeah. but my childhood, I uh, uh, was all was all there. Yeah. Now, from '73, you move on to Toronto, Toronto, and you're a resident of Toronto. Uh yeah. I generally, actually, you know, I, I I like to say that I live in the Shire. The Shire, <laughs> yeah, outside of Toronto. Turn north at Greenland with your lovely wife. <laughs> yeah. Sassy George. Sassy. Sassy. <laughs> Actually, she's on a plane right now going a, to a gig like Yeah, I mean, like she's, she's, just, she's just as busy as you are. Yeah. You know, on tour, making music, making records. Matter of fact, I got to play on SAS last record. Uh, racing revisited. revisited. Yeah, that was that was a that lot. That was fantastic. Of fun. Yeah, we, we really had go- the best time. Yeah, we did. We had a great time. And actually, and we've also been working on a secret project, mission from God record. Uh, yeah, of we're, to, we are the disciples. Yeah, that's you right. and I <laughs> and Will and, and, and yeah. yeah, yeah. So this is uh, as a matter of fact, SAS is how I became. You know, she's the connection. How I became a member. All roads of the lead to yeah, all, roads, all lead. roads lead to that's SAS. Right, as they course. should. We like to say that, which is why she's coming out with a wine. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> what's What's the label called? The I don't. Label? I think it's called Kick Ass SAS, but don't quote me on that because things change daily. But I'm pretty okay. sure it's Kick Ass and- SAS. You'll have to ask her. And it's specific, uh, I mean, it's a Merlot? Or no, no, no. It's uh, I went to the first tasting, so mm. I obviously don't remember much because we were tasting. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, it's grapes that are grown in that region of, of you know, Niagara. I don't know how familiar, Niagara. Yeah, how familiar you are with that. But, uh, I'm yeah, not, it's, it's, it's going to be great. It's, it's fabulous. They yeah, put you it don't think of together. Niagara because Niagara Falls, I mean, I see a lot of photos of, of Niagara Falls frozen. Yeah, yeah, no. It, it's, it's kind of just a region that, that's... Uh, that's good for growing certain types of grapes. I mm. think down here in the states they they uh, they 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 import the ice wine. That that's pretty popular. Ice I don't know because I don't. Yeah, wine. ice wine. It's this sweet syrupy, you know, god awful stuff that I would never drink. But a lot of people really love it. Sounds like we'd be good on pancakes. Yep. Pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> but you know, you're not going to have uh, any anytime soon, so it doesn't matter. I know some people like that for hangovers. They will have yeah the ice wine syrup on pancakes. Yeah, yeah. baby, ice no. wine on pancakes. You might have just invented <laughs> the next craze. <laughs> <laughs> so you're a foodie. You and Sass, as a matter of fact, you studied well culinary arts. I wouldn't say that. I, I apprenticed. You apprenticed when I was younger. Uh, when yeah. I was younger, very young. Yeah. And uh, of course, when I started 
making enough money playing music, I abandoned it. But I kept it up as a hobby because I'm, I'm pretty passionate about it. So uh, I've eaten your food. I mean, it's, you have. It's, oh, yes, yes you right, have. We have. Yeah, yeah. That's with right. the other, yeah, with bank. Oh my god, <laughs> you and I are involved in too many things <laughs> together. We could sit yeah. here for like hours. Yeah, but actually, yeah, because you and I and Sass and and some of the other uh, members of the Guess Who family have been. Collaborating with uh, Jim Carter, yeah, on the bank charity, benevolent or, artist national charity. Yeah. That's right, yeah. and um, we've been in. You know, actually, we we've, we've been able to raise a lot of money for for yeah. the. Uh, it was almost a million last year. Yeah, for the for, for, the, the, uh, for the Canadian. What's that? What's it called? The NMC. Yeah, the National Music Center. Canada, Music Center in, in Calgary. In Calgary. Yeah. Calgary, and it's a beautiful yeah. place, and we get to play there, and uh, <laughs> it's just fantastic. So, boy, we are we see a lot of each other. <laughs> well, you know, we like each other. <laughs> that's fine with me, as you know. I, I'm yeah. very fond. Yeah, of I mean, you. not only do I enjoy your company, but yeah. also I, I enjoy being on stage with you. I mean, you are the yeah. consummate frontman, and by frontman, I mean, of course, you know, you're a great singer, great guitar player, musician, because you also play the keyboards. You know, you play the piano on stage. But you know, to be a great frontman, that's that's really, you know, you have to be born with that. You just can't really. You know, go yeah. to Guitar Center and say, or, you know, give me that front man pill yeah. and I'm going to take it and become a great front man. This is something that you have to have inside of you. I suppose. I mean, as, as you like to say, yeah, it's, just, it's just a work in progress. Oh, we all are. You know, yeah. We're, yeah. we all are works in progress. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't, you know, I, I, I didn't magically become that you know, uh, at one day it was, it's, 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 it was really in my case at years of, you know, just hard work, you know, and figuring out my, finding my way and navigating just like anybody, you know, there's the musical part, there's the singing part, there's the interaction part. I remember I used to get really scared to look at people when uh, in, 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 when I was younger, from the stage, yeah, yeah, you know, because you, you, at the beginning you're, you're you're like, why are they looking at me? Oh, they must hate me. Everybody hates me, you know. <laughs> and then uh, so you always look down at the floor. You look at the ceiling or whatever. I don't know. Maybe you went through this. I'm not sure. But uh, and then one day I said, you know, I got to get over this. So I just started looking at everybody in the eye. You know, almost in an awkward way. <laughs> and a serial killer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was like, this guy's strange. Oh, God. So, you know, and then that led to the next thing and to the next thing and the next thing. Yeah. So it's just one of those things, you know, it's, it's not unlike food. <laughs> You know, it's mm. finding different different yeah. ways and different ingredients and different yeah. ways of preparing things. Yeah. You know, yeah. music's but, very but, similar. But I got to tell you, you know, from me being on stage, and, I, and I've, I have experienced being on stage with some of the greatest front men, you know. Uh -huh. uh, but I, it's rarely that I have had an occasion of being in a classic rock band. And it's a right. whole different crowd. Yeah, for sure. You know, they're, they might be, they, they, you have to work them harder because they're, they're older, they're older. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, and also they have. I mean, think about this. If yeah. uh, if the band, the Guess Who, has been around since the '60s, yeah. and in the '60s there was a certain crowd behavior or no or no behavior except yeah. for Woodstock, that was just nuts. But usually in the '60s and maybe early '70s, yeah. the crowd just went there and sat down and watched the band. Yeah, that's right. That's and right. I don't think much has changed no, <laughs> with our crowd. No, but um, until you get them up, because you do get them up. Well, you hit, yeah. That's uh, I guess that's true. The the uh, I've said this before, you know, and it's and it's the it's the truth. It, you know, we're playing a lot of the same songs every night, right? Mm -hmm. you, we go up there, and 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 you know, I, I've heard the. Uh, I've heard this, this. This has been asked of me many times. Like, don't you get bored playing the same songs over and over again? I, everybody gets asked that. Mm -hmm. But you know, I always say that it's it's every single show we do is a different experience because you're establishing a connection with people, and there, what sep those people are what separate one one gig to the next or one show to the next, mm -hmm. right? Every it's like bits and bytes. It's a whole new ball game every every night. Even though you're playing the same music, you have a different connection. And you can feel it. 
if you're aware of it, of course. And I think that's the most important thing. And that's that involve when you talk about getting people up. If you don't establish that connection to begin with, it ain't going to happen. Not in my experience, right? Yeah. And Does that make sense? So, yeah, you just mentioned about playing the same songs every night. Mm -hmm. Now, we have a new record coming out on September 14th, yes. but we have been playing some of the new songs. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that, that you brought up and is that people think that the new stuff, the new songs are actually from old records. From yeah, old some people do, for sure. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, a, that's yeah. a comment we get all the time. Yeah, and I am aware that, for example, the record started being in the works about two years ago, basically. Yeah, it, it's, it's ob obviously a longer story because it was a progression of things. And, and I, I wrote in my notes that, you know, the record... Was st was started by me and finished by Will and myself, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know. So there's it's a bit of a two part story. Mm -hmm. There's the 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 first half which was mm -hmm. was which was started when I joined the band. Mm -hmm. I wrote playing on the radio. I think I think I have to check. You know, just a few months after I joined, mm -hmm. you know, and it, and they were these were songs. These were observations of the band around me, like. And, mm -hmm. and, and I was looking at, I was playing with these fellas that had been around a long time, you know, and came from a different era. Mm -hmm. So that's where I was drawing inspiration from. Interesting. So basically that song would have not been written if you had been in a different band. No, no. I, 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 it was a direct uh, experience just hanging out with those guys. I don't know why it came to me. It was so long ago now. But, but uh, that song, A Long Day, uh, um, Yeah, even even uh, uh, when we were young, you know, which will it was that was Will's uh, original idea, but mm -hmm. but it, it, that could be a bookend to playing on the radio, Absolutely. just lyrically. Absolutely. Now, we're talking about songs that nobody's heard yet, so you'll have to take our word for it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but so yeah, so the first let's say the first four or five songs I had done before mm -hmm. Will had joined, and. Uh, And uh, we had a bunch of, I mean, we had 20 or some mm. 25 songs mm. by the time we were choosing for the mm. album. So, uh, mm. but we picked those 10. I got off track. What are we talking about? Yeah. No, no, this, this, this <laughs> is great because it, 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 one track leads to the next one. One track you know? needs, yeah. leads to the next one. So, so taking into consideration that you've been writing and producing, as a matter of fact, I'm, mm. I've worked with you, you as a producer, yeah. uh, on the, uh, on the, Racine Revisited mm -hmm. Sass Jordan record mm -hmm. and I've always enjoyed working with you you're yeah, incredibly right. focused and, and there's a, a clarity of, of what I really when I enjoy the uh, the recording process you know part of it is working with a producer that's very clear in their ideas and how mm -hmm. to communicate them that's the biggest challenge is the communication part mm -hmm. because You know, I, I, I came from that that Glenn Miller school of, I hear the whole arrangement in my head. How do you explain that to somebody? Exactly. Well, you know, it, yeah. take, it takes time and, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and patience. And patience. And I, you know, and, and, and you make mistakes. You make a lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, so, you know, by the time you and I got together, mm -hmm. you know, I, I was, mm -hmm. I'm in my 50s. <laughs> and I have, I've, I've uh, you know... I, I've uh, I've learned I've learned from a lot of a lot of mistakes mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, but I still you know when you you still have to keep, getting back to the communication part mm -hmm. it's number one you have to trust the people you're working with and vice mm -hmm. versa like you like you always say and you know, and and, it, and it's a lot easier when you're working with people that you you, you have mm -hmm. a, a, an idea of what they're capable of doing mm -hmm. right absolutely and because I you know I played with mm -hmm. you and, yeah. and Brent and, mm -hmm. and, and the yeah. guys it was quite easy yeah Yeah, you know, that would be Brent Fitz. Brent Fitz, yeah. yeah. And who else was there? Uh, Chris Cadell, who yes. played on that record. Mm -hmm. And even the session we just did, the secret uh, uh, yeah. uh, uh, thing that exactly. we're doing, that we, yeah. I don't know if we can talk about it yet, but, yeah. but uh, uh, which Will was involved in. Yes. You know, we just sat in a room and played. It's like old school. Yeah. You know, it's funny, a little segue to that. Yeah. We did do some demos with the Guess Who back when, before, mm. before yourself and Will joined. Mm. And uh, and we did a couple of tracks, and we I produced it in a more modern sense, mm -hmm. you know, where everything was very clear, 
and you know you could hear every little mm-hmm. drum hit and this and that a very modern sounding mm-hmm. and it was funny when will and i just decided to take this different approach you know it was like you know